Andrew Parmentier is co-founder and managing director of Height Analytics, an independent research and investment advisory firm based in Washington. Andrew has more than 13 years experience in the financial services industry and has also worked on Capitol Hill. And he joins us now. Andrew, welcome to Bloomberg News. Good to have you on. Thank you very much for having me. Andrew, why won't divided government necessarily mean gridlock? Well, I, I think going into next year and based on how the economic recovery goes, how successful the Fed is in its second iter iteration of quantitative easing, I think Republicans are going to come to the realization that there's a middle class in, in, in this country that's uh, feeling less and less connected to um, that kind of middle class ideal. They're still there, but it's, it's kind of slipping further and further away. And yeah. when I look at the last 18 months, I mean, we've done a lot to support middle class income statements. And um, the Republicans and Democrats are going to continue to have to stimulate uh, this economy and, and try to find a way to break bread in doing it. Is that one of their main challenges at this point? I guess uh, maybe starting not necessarily tomorrow, but starting with the next Congress uh, to try to find ways to support the incomes of the middle class. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, the, look, the bigger the gains uh, that Republicans see tonight, the harder it's going to be for them to reach an agreement with Democrats on taxes going into the end of this year. Why do you the say that? The more emboldened they're going. Well, I just think that you're going to have more members who are coming into Washington, and, and they're going to want to be there when that deal gets cut. Right. So if it's 50 plus seats in the House or six or eight, uh, you know, Senate seats, uh, there's going to be a big push to say, hey, look, you know, l l I want to be there for part of this deal. Don't forget, yeah. too, the the deficit commission's coming out with their big plan in December. And part of that will have some tax elements uh, in it. And Republicans may want to, to lump some of those in. But I definitely would not expect these guys to come back in a lame duck and just kind of, uh, you know, d dust off the old uh, tax compromise so that they can get home for the holidays. Andrew, how are the markets going to react, say, tomorrow? Is a Republican win and control the House already priced in? Well, I mean, look, po political uh, disapproval leads to increased risk premium in the market. And I think what we've seen over the last few weeks is, is some of that risk premium coming out, the check and balance, the gridlock. You know, what's interesting in talking to uh, traders today and talking to, uh, to traders on our trading desk, yeah. people are really saying now if the Republicans don't take back the Senate, the market could be disappointed. So yeah. it'll be very interesting going into trading tomorrow if, if there is a little too much anticipation for Republican gains. Andrew, I want to play something for you. Earlier today, Douglas Holtz Eakin, the president of the American Action Forum, was on Bloomberg TV, and he had these comments today about the difficulty that Republicans and Democrats will have towards working a balanced budget. I'd like to play that and then get your reaction. Republicans who are saying that they can balance the budget strictly with discretionary spending are missing uh, a, a real uh, image of how large the hole is that we're in. Uh, for us to balance the budget will require a comprehensive, across-the-board approach to controlling spending. It'll take many years, but it's actually imperative that the United States get uh, started with this. Andrew, let's get your reaction to that. Well, I would make a couple of points. Number one, the, the blessing and the curse of this uh, deficit commission is that it's going to show the markets how big the deficit monster is mm. and, and provide a prescription for killing it. But Congress, there's no political will to do it. So we're going to see a huge deficit and no political will to, 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 to rein it in. Um, I, I completely agree with his assessment. I mean, we have identified some areas, for example, the hospital space we're very negative on. Um, simply because hospitals make up the largest percent of Medicare. If there are cuts to be had, I think that the analysis that really needs to be done is what's the low common denominator? What can everybody agree on to get $100 billion, $200 billion in, in tax cuts? And the, don't forget, the other way to get revenue, too, is to allow for the repatriation of foreign derived earnings, for example, which might be an area where Republicans and Democrats can agree. But this whole idea that Republicans are going to usher in this new era of fiscal austerity is completely ridiculous. Uh, Andrew, the recession officially ended in June of 2009. Why don't a lot of Americans acknowledge that or believe that? Well, because unemployment's north of 9% and, you know, there's structural, non-structural kind of unemployment in this country. I mean, we talk a lot internally about um, people feeling less and less connected to that middle class ideal. And it, it is... 
uh, it's very important, you know, that the the flat screens and the multiple cars and the, you know whether it's idealized or not. Yeah. That's the reality that people are dealing with, and yeah. and and that was part of the reason people took on so much credit, and that becomes a very big policy challenge yeah. for for lawmakers to continue to feed that. And Andrew, in ten seconds, also a policy challenge yeah. for the Fed. Apology challenge for the Fed. I mean, you know, you're using a, you know, pick your pick your uh, weapon, bazooka, baseball bat. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a big weapon to deal yeah. with a fairly tricky problem. All right, Andrew Parmentier joining us from Washington. Andrew, thanks.